In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of enthalpy. So we'll start by saying what enthalpy is. So enthalpy is a measure of the heat energy in a chemical system. And notice there it carries the symbol capital H. So just quickly talk through this diagram. So we've got two key things in this diagram. The chemical system is basically the atoms, the molecules, the ions that make up the chemicals of the reactants and products. And then around the outside of all of that, we've got what's called the surroundings. Now, a thing to be aware of is enthalpy can't be measured directly. That's really complicated to, to explain this. I'm gonna do my best, but don't worry, you would never have to be able to explain this. But let's see what we think of this. So there's no such thing as zero enthalpy. All substances, even at absolute zero, have got positive enthalpies. So imagine you wanted to measure the height of a building or a person. You start at ground level zero and you work the way to the top. Now you can't do that with enthalpy because you've got no zero point. So what do we do instead? We measure enthalpy change. So enthalpy changes are denoted by the symbol delta H. So that Greek capital delta just means change, so change in enthalpy. So almost all chemical reactions involve changes in the energy of the system. Remember, that's the, the atoms, the molecules, the ions. In all chemical reactions, energy is needed to break the bonds in the reactants. And then when you put things back together, make new bonds in the product, the opposite happens and energy is released. Now, it's very unlikely that these two processes will match each other in terms of energy. They won't be equal. And so some energy is either released into the surroundings, so the surroundings get hotter, or the opposite happens and energy is taken or absorbed from the surroundings and the surroundings feel colder as a result. So it's the heat released or absorbed during the reaction. That's what we know as the enthalpy change. And it's this change in energy that you can actually measure. So a good thing to do at this point is just to try and visualize what we've said so far. Again, I've got these two diagrams. We'll talk about the left-hand one first. So in this scenario, you can see that the chemical system is losing energy to the surroundings. So if you think about what's gonna to happen to the surroundings, they're gonna get hotter as a result. And so this is your exothermic reaction and notice that the sign of the delta H is negative. And then on the right hand side, we've got the opposite scenario. So energy is being absorbed by the system, the chemical system. So the surroundings are losing energy, it's going into the system. And so that's your endothermic reaction. Obviously the surroundings are gonna feel colder as a result. And notice this has a positive sign for its delta H value. And it's really important that that positive sign is shown for an endothermic reaction. Now a really common way to represent this is via what's called an enthalpy diagram. So I've got one for exothermic and one for endothermic, just to quickly explain the difference. So you'll see for the left-hand one, the exothermic reaction, the reactants start higher in enthalpy than the products. So as the products are formed, enthalpy is lost into the surroundings, the surroundings are gonna feel hotter, and that's accompanied by a negative delta H sign. I've just made up that number, by the way. So it's just arbitrary. And then on the right-hand side, for your endothermic reaction, it's the other way around. The products are higher in enthalpy than the reactants. So to form, when the products are formed, energy is absorbed into the um, system from the surroundings to help make the products. And so we see the delta H with its positive um, sign. So at this point, I thought it'd be a good idea to think about an actual reaction that I'm sure most people are familiar with, the combustion of butane gas, and this would be the reaction that takes place in a lighter, so a handheld lighter. So there's the equation for the reaction. Butane reacts with six and a half moles of oxygen to combust completely, and it produces four moles of CO2 and five moles of H2O. And you'll see there that the enthalpy change for this reaction is minus exothermic 2878 kilojoules per mole 
of um, butane combusted. So what would the enthalpy diagram look like therefore? Well, based on what you've just seen, you would think it would look like that. So notice I've got the actual formulae now on the reactants and products lines. There's that delta H value, that difference between the enthalpy of the reactants and the products. Now I thought it would be a good idea to just sort of um, model this. So there's my, my light there, it's filled with butane gas. And so the diagram kind of implies that if I just release some butane gas, the obviously the um, atmosphere in, in the room I'm in is filled with oxygen. So if I just release, nothing's happening, right? So there's no reaction taking place. So how do we get this reaction to happen? Well, we have to overcome the activation energy barrier for the reaction. Well, how do I do that? Well, I pull on this thumb wheel here and there's reaction happening now. So getting back to the enthalpy diagram, obviously this diagram here implies that this will just spontaneously go from um, reactants to products. Well, we've got to factor in that energy barrier. So the diagram is slightly different. So there's the start point again, but to get the reaction to go, I've got to overcome this barrier. And so we have this sort of curved line connecting the reactants to the product and that increase in energy that I had to supply. So that was from the spark on the lighter. This is the activation energy. So I've got to raise the energy of the uh, reactants to get over that activation energy barrier and then the reaction will take place. So this is the minimum energy needed for the reaction to occur. And what's actually happening there is we're breaking the bonds in the reactants, so the covalent bonds between the um, carbons and the carbons in the hydrogen and the OO double bond in the oxygen molecules, they're being um, broken by that activation energy. Once that's done, the reaction happens. So we'll just finish by looking at an example of an endothermic reaction. So the example I've gone for is this one here. This reaction takes place in a blast furnace when iron is extracted from its ore. Iron oxide is heated with carbon and you can see from the um, enthalpy change sign, that positive um, sign in front of the number there, this is an endothermic reaction. So the basic enthalpy diagram is going to look like that. So we've got that positive enthalpy change, that upwards arrow from the reactant up to the product. But remember, it's not as straightforward as that. We've got to overcome the activation energy barrier to get the reaction to go, which we would represent with that sort of curved connector there. And the activation energy is going to be the energy from here all the way up to there to get this reaction to go. So the activation energy will be represented with that red arrow there.